Today's presentation is about effusive and explosive eruptions and what the difference is. We're going to think about composition of the lava, gas content and how they're linked to different plate boundary settings. So we're going to start with explosive eruptions and here you can see the Indian Ocean and there's a plate here which is travelling this direction. It's being subducted underneath this plate here. So this is the island of Sumatra. You can see here all these triangles represent volcanoes. So explosive eruptions are associated with subduction zones. Um, these zones produce uh, stratovolcanoes, very steeply sided volcanoes. And these volcanoes are built up from magma, which is very, very viscous and slow flowing, which is one of the reasons why they form steeply sided cones. Um, additionally, the gas cannot escape as the magma erupts. And uh, so you can see there's a violent eruption of um, tephra and ash into the ice. Uh, Earth's atmosphere, which you can see here, um, these are very dangerous for, create many dangerous hazards. Effusive eruptions dominate at mid-ocean ridges, like here on the Mid-Atlantic Ridge. New crust forms as the plates pull apart, here the North American plate moving westwards and the Eurasian plate moving eastwards. New crust forms here at the junction between the plates. The plates pull apart at a range of speeds between about 1 cm to 11 cm per year. At this junction, you get the eruption of basaltic lava, which is made from basalt. Um, and it often occurs along fissures, so lines along which um, the plates are pulling apart, along which you get eruptions. The um, volcanoes which are formed on land are often low angled because the magma which is produced is very fast flowing and runny. Um, underneath the sea, you can see um, ridges which have um, not yet breached the ocean surface. So typically a ridge might be two and a half kilometres down. Um, and these ridges are very large scale. They could be 1,500 metres uh, wide, so a, a one and a half kilometres wide. So how is magma formed? Firstly, we have convection currents in the mantle, um, which drive the plates apart. As the flow rises, we get partial melting, and this occurs because closer to the surface there's less pressure, and less pressure leads to melting. The source material here in the mantle for the, the melt, the basalt, is very rich in iron and magnesium, and these minerals which form silicate chains are very short. The chains are short, there's not much polymerization. This means that the um, melt which is erupted onto the sea floor is of low viscosity um, and low viscosity means that the gases escape easily and they form non-explosive um, eruptions. So what would you expect to see at a constrictive plate boundary? The answer is at the surface where the rocks are cooler and are more brittle you see rifting so a crack in the earth's surface here this is Thingvellir and the crack has been filled with water. Um, at depth, you see a sea sea mounts close to the ridge here. These mountains underneath the sea, and you also see the ridge itself, the mid ocean ridge. For example, we already mentioned the mid Atlantic ridge, but uh, there's also the mid Indian rise. There's also the East Pacific rise. We find large volumes of lava which are produced um, at these junctions. Here, this is a large lava flow which has been produced on the island of Jaime which is an, an island which became um, breached the surface of the, the sea um, close, to, close to Iceland, um, so very important. At convergent or destructive oceanic, oceanic or oceanic continental plate boundaries, there are violent but often less frequent eruptions. This is because the subducting plate contains wet sediments which contain hydrous minerals, minerals which contain water in this plate which is going down into the Earth's asthenosphere. As the pressure and the temperature increase, as we're going down into the Earth's um, the interior of the Earth, um, water is driven out of these rocks, so you can see this here. And when this water is driven out, it's added to the area here called the mantle wedge. When it's added to the mantle wedge, it leads to melting. So the magma then rises and erupts through the, the Earth's crust through the lithosphere. The magma which is fractionated or produced by this process is very viscous. It contains long polymerized chains of silicate minerals. It's often called rhyolite 
and water and other gases are dissolved in these large magma chambers. The gases cannot easily escape, um, and as, it, as the pressure is reduced, those gases form large, um, uh, they expand and form large bubbles in the magma, and so it causes very explosive eruptions. What do you expect to see? Um, landforms at destructive plate boundaries? The answer is um, you would expect, here's the plate boundary, you'd expect to see a deep ocean trench um, alongside the boundary. This is the oceanic plate which is being subducted, moving in this direction. This is the ocean uh, chain of islands, volcanic islands, stratovolcanoes, which are formed above sea level. Um, and these are the highly explosive um, eruptions, often leading to hazards like pyroclastic flows, lava bombs and ash, which is ejected high into the atmosphere. So here is your summary. We have at one end the, uh, the eruptions like those on Iceland, at the other hand here the eruptions like those on the island of Sumatra, um, like Mount Cinnabon. So we have explosive eruptions where the composition of the magma is typically rhyolitic, rhyolite, which has high silica content, high gas content, high viscosity, but a low temperature. The low temperature is linked to the viscosity. At the other end we have basalt and we have low silica content, we have low gas content, we have low viscosity and we have high temperatures. It erupts at around a thousand degrees. This is a really helpful summary to help you to explain why um, the style of eruption is different and how it's linked to both magma and um, to the gas content. So you can see here there are four boxes which are blank. What should go in these boxes? So in summary, uh, we found out about the landforms and the landscapes, um, and these are determined by the type of lava, the plate boundary setting, the type of materials which are ejected, and the style which the eruption has. Um, eruptions can be typified as being either effusive or explosive.